This module is Module 2, Radiation and Radiation Safety, Module 2A, CT Dosimetry. This is an overview of the electromagnetic energy spectrum all the way from radio waves down to gamma rays. You can see that X-rays fall into a very high area of energy. There are two important parameters, exposure versus dose. Exposure is a measure of the ionization produced in air by X-rays and gamma rays. So when we go on the beach, we are exposed to the sun, but that has little to do with internal dosing. Dose or absorbed dose is the amount of radiation energy absorbed into a given mass of tissue. The major elements of CT dosimetry are tube voltage or kilovolts. Importantly, in this particular situation, radiation dose is related to kilovolt squared. So this is a very, very important parameter in terms of either increasing radiation dose or subsequently reducing radiation dose. Tube current, MA, is directly proportional also to the amount of absorbed dose to the patient. Exposure time, which is defined as a multiplication of the MA times the number of seconds that the scanner is actually turned on. Pitch affects not only MAS, but what's called MAS effective, as you'll see in uh, slides to follow. The total coverage, that is the amount of the body actually scanned, the z-axis coverage, is also a determinant of the total amount of radiation. And finally, the setting of the slice width or the collimation. Absorbed dose and radiation risk can be looked at in these particular very important parameters. We can measure the absorbed dose, which is the average energy observed, absorbed per meter of the body, and this is measured. We can then estimate organ doses, the average energy absorbed by organ, and then we can calculate the effective dose, which is the actual radiation to the patient. You'll notice that the measured and estimated radiation doses are given in MGY or milligrays, but the effective radiation dose to the patient is given in the units of MCV or millisieverts. Milligrays and millisieverts are identical in terms of size, but the differences in the nomenclature defines whether we're talking about measured or estimated radiation versus calculated radiation, which is pertinent to uh, the exposure of the patient. We evaluate radiation initially on any scanner by using a common phantom called the CTDI, or CT Dosimetry Index. The scanner parameters are set up to simulate uh, the imaging of a patient, but we then record the uh, radiation incident within each of these individual uh, areas or probes, and then we come up with a weighted average, which is dependent upon uh, the uh, MA of each area. This then allows us to estimate the absorbed dose. CT dose depends then on the geometry of the scanner, the filters applied, especially uh, the use of a bow tie filter, and the shape and the dose profile, as well as the exposure time. The absorbed dose is then estimated by the CTDI apparatus. The CTDI, however, must be corrected for pitch of an actual study and for the length of the body examined. Here's an example. If I have a pitch of one, that is a direct overlap, the scanner Z width each time it rotates around and the movement of the table are identical, that gives us a pitch of one. If I have a 400 MA setting and a 0.5 second rotational speed, the MAS is 200. And this is accurate for a pitch of one, that is no overlap. However, consider another example which is more consistent with what we do in uh, cardiac CT. At a pitch of less than one, MAS ignores helical overlap 
and thus MAS effective accounts for pitch. MAS effective then is MA times rotation time divided by pitch. In this case you can see that the MAS effective is 800 compared to the pitch of 1 which was 200. Therefore when we went to a pitch was 1 quarter the standard pitch we increased the radiation dose significantly. The other uh, important situation is determining not only the dose within a particular uh, square meter, but we need to be able to talk about the length of the scan employed. This produces something called a dose length product, which uses the results of the CTDI, the MAS effective, and multiplied by the scan length in total. Biological effectiveness is also another important parameter. Each of the individual organs exposed has a somewhat different sensitivity to radiation with respect to the concerns of producing cancers. Bone is the least um, uh, modified uh, and skin with a biological effectiveness of 0.01. Breast, bladder, liver, and esophagus fall in a 0.05 situation. Bone marrow, colon, lung, and stomach are much more uh, radiation sensitive and the most important of all uh, the organs that are exposed to various radiations are the gonads at 0.2. To estimate radiation dose then we need to determine organ dose which is done from a lookup look table. Uh, this is then defined as the dose length product times the biological effectiveness parameter which was shown on the previous slide. You apply then the organ weighting factors to the doses and the effective dose then becomes a combination of these parameters and the units are changed from milligrays to millisieverts even though they're the same unit. Again, note that measured radiation is in milligrays and effective radiation dose is in millisieverts. In practice, one can get the dose length product actually from the scanner after the procedure. One can then estimate effective or patient dose using the kappa factor depending upon the body of the area scanned. So effective dose equals DLP times kappa. Shown on the table are a number of kappas for head, neck, chest, abdomen, and pelvis. So for example, let's say that we performed a CCTA and we want to understand the dose received by the patient. From the scanner, we are given the information that the DLP was 500. Well, we know that we scanned the chest, which has a kappa factor of 0.014, and we we'll use that in the multiplication, and we find out that the patient received 7 millisieverts effective radiation dose for that particular examination.